Hi everyone, this is week two's uh, support video to just bring you through the expectations for this week. I'm going to take my lovely picture off and get to the content. All right, so last night we had, um, we went over the PBIS, the design thinking, and then we went over the RP very shortly. Um, here is a link to the PowerPoint, so if you want to go through and check out what it was that we talked about, then that's there for you real time. This is where I'm going to be putting the support video as soon as it renders. And then I just wanted to go over what's next. So the, you have two readings to do by the 27th, so that gives you two weeks. So the first one is Chapter 2 of the Bambara text. And then um, I'd like you to do um, the design thinking reading. And remember, you have to sign up for a free account, and then you're able to download it for free. And there is the link there, and it's also on your syllabus. Then you're going to be doing the critical reflection number two. That is actually due on the 20th because we want you to come into the next class um, really thinking about how these things um, are affecting your teaching. And so this is a great way to kind of brainstorm and come up with some of those ideas. Um, and then the next thing is um, I wanted to make sure everybody remembers the next week we are doing the content specific groups, but everyone's going to meet back in the same room we've been meeting in um, 127. Um, and then the credential teacher um, survey, credential teacher survey is due on the 25th. And remember, um, first of all, um, you have already gotten your grade for it. So the tracking that I'm doing is just so that we can follow up and try to get as many of your sites to participate so we can get a good idea about what education is um, in San Diego um, and what, what the experience is like for teachers. Um, the second thing is, um, uh, you know what, I forgot it. But anyway, so that is there, but um, please send it out. And if you need, oh, that's what the second thing is. If you need me to um, find a teacher for you to send the survey to uh, because you are on break or you don't feel comfortable reaching out to your uh, cooperating teacher, I can do that. Just let me know. Just send me an email and I will support you. Um, and the last thing is today is the community picnic, and it's at Bonita Cove East, um, and you are welcome to stop by. It's from 4 to 7. Here is the critical reflection, um, and it's due on the 20th. And so after you read Chapter 2, and you could take what we did for the PBIS activity in class, um, I want you to explain how you'll promote PBIS as a new teacher at a new site, especially if not all of the um, school staff and teachers are implementing the PBIS. Then I want you to tell me how you're going to use design thinking in your teaching. And then the third one is, um, are the structures we have in place promoting a culture where we all belong? And so I want you to, um, that's from Sean's RP assignment, so or activity last night, so I want you to think about that. And then number four is, now that you have learned the content and critically reflected on your classroom experience, how will you move from an observer um, which you do at the beginning of your practicum, uh, to an active participant within your placement. Um, you know, just being an adult in the room is actually, uh, from the student's perspective, a big, um, a, a big uh, step. So, you know, they are looking to you to find out, you know, are you paying attention to how, you know, they're acting or are you supporting them in their work? And so how are you going to make that shift from just kind of observing to being more active? And then also, uh, what challenges have you observed in your placement that you believe you uh, may encounter as a teacher in the future? So part of our job as educators is to, um, is to notice, take note, and then come up with strategies to support our students. So I want you to think about anything that you've seen in your placements that you think, oh, that might be something that um, I'm going to need to address as a teacher as well. So for example, it could be, you know, talking out in class or um, off-task behavior or something like that. And if you just want to kind of explain, you know, some of the things that you've seen, then we can um, prepare next week to um, start addressing those and coming up with great um, ways to support your students. Then the last question is, what type of co-teaching did your instructors model this week? How can you promote a positive experience for your students? And if you're using a type of co-teach, um, if you're using this type of co-teaching, and then how can you decrease barriers to learning for all students while you're using this style? So I want to bring a reading to you. Oh, whoops. Um, and this is just 
um, one great, so you recognize this uh, uh, figure, but it's one great option for really kind of thinking about the different types of co-teaching. So we start out and we have the station teaching. Um, that's where there's three groups and two of them are facilitated by teachers and then the third one is the students um, either working alone or with a partner to complete a review activity or a project, but it has to be something they can do independently. Um, and then the students move from station to station. The teachers stay where they are. The second kind is parallel teaching, and this is when um, you have a big group, and so you want to split them into two, and you want to cover the same topic, but you want to um, allow the students to be able to participate more, and so you make the group smaller. But it's, it's two people presenting the same topic, but in a different area. And then, sorry, then the next one, Oh, and here's some more. They go through a little bit more about the parallel teaching. Then there's alternative teaching, and this is where you have um, one teacher working with most of the class, and then the other one maybe pulls out a small group to um, give them either maybe some pre-teaching or to reteach or possibly to give additional scaffolds if that's what they need. Um, and, you know, it just gives them more um, individualized um, supports at that point. Uh, then there's teaming, and teaming is when all the instructors, or both instructors, or for us, all three instructors, are at the, um, at the front of the room or wherever, but they're equally engaged in the instruction. And so it can be that they're doing different pieces of it, but they're all um, very much um, there to, to show exactly what it is around the content or the process that they're trying to demonstrate. Um, and then there's one teach, one assist, and that is um, when, you know, there's one teacher and um, then the others are there assisting, whether they're handing out other uh, documents or the papers or they're checking in with attendance with everyone, or um, as we did last night, hint, hint, uh, they're going around and um, instead of having one teacher trying to meet the needs of 30 students, you have three adults in the room that kind of split it up and walk around to the different groups and give their different perspectives and make sure everybody's on task and also on topic. Um, and if they have any questions and you try to help answer them or guide them in their instruction or their learning. Um, so anyway, this is uh, just an additional tool to help you figure out which co-teaching style we're looking for and um, answering those questions. So once again, if you need anything, if you have any questions about anything, if you're confused about anything, or you even just wanna talk through anything that's been going on, we are here, I am here, and um, I would really love to help you. So please reach out. Thank you and have a great week.